Greetings students and welcome back to my lecture series on partial differential equations. In this video we're going to talk about Laplace transforms and apply them towards solving PDEs. Now Laplace transforms are particularly useful for PDEs that are on semi-infinite spatial domains. But first, what is a Laplace transform? Well, it's a special type of integral transform. Its job is to transform a function using an integration operation. Essentially, what it does is that it changes a function f of t to another function capital F of s using this integration formula, where capital F of s, the Laplace transform of f of t, is the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t times the exponential of negative st dt. The Laplace transform is also invertible, which means that I can take my capital F of s and get f of t from it using something called the inverse Laplace transform which I can find using 1 over 2 pi i times the integral from c minus i times infinity to c plus i times infinity of capital F of s times the exponential of st ds. Some of you might already be familiar with the Laplace transform, but just to refresh your memory, let's remind ourselves why the Laplace transform is so useful when solving both ODEs and PDEs. So say I have an ordinary differential equation like the second derivative of f with respect to t equals some function g of t, f, and df by dt. Now because the Laplace transform is an integral transform, you can intuitively imagine that if I apply the Laplace transform to this differential equation, I will in effect integrate out one of the variables. In this case, if I integrate out the t completely, I won't be left with any derivatives. And in the end, I'll just be solving an algebraic equation for the Laplace transform of f of t, which is capital F of s. Now once I've solved this algebraic equation for capital F of s, I can take the inverse transform of both sides to get the solution for our function f of t. Now as I mentioned above, what the inverse transform does is that it essentially converts your f of s to the original function f of t. Now this inverse transform stage is often the hardest part because there's a lot of work that goes into manipulating capital F of s so that we can eventually find the inverse transform. And in addition, there's a lot of complicated functions out there whose inverse transforms are nearly impossible to find. Now what about for partial differential equations? Well, suppose that I have a partial differential equation like the one-dimensional heat equation, which involves a function u of x comma t. Now what I can do here is to take the Laplace transform of this PDE with respect to the time variable. And as I mentioned before, when I take the Laplace transform with respect to an independent variable, which is an integral transform, it's as though I'm integrating out that independent variable. And when we integrate out the time in this partial differential equation, we'll be left with an ordinary differential equation in just x. And again, once I solve this ODE, I'll end up with a solution for capital U of x comma s, which I can then use to get u of x comma t by taking an inverse transform. Now by a similar logic, if my PDE involves partial derivatives, but now instead of in two independent variables, it involves partial derivatives in n independent variables, then taking the Laplace transform of that PDE with respect to one of those independent variables will result in a new PDE but with n minus 1 independent variables because again the Laplace transform is an integral transform that integrates out one of those variables. As a result, what the Laplace transform does is it makes our differential equation simpler. Again, when we're using the Laplace transform, the hardest part is usually at the last step when we're finding the inverse Laplace. So just for your convenience, I'm going to summarize the Laplace transform procedure right here. So again, we'll start off with the differential equation involving the function u of t. u could still depend on other independent variables like x, y, and z, but I've only written down t because that's what we're Laplace transforming. Now once we have this differential equation, what we can do is we can take the Laplace transform of it to end up with a simpler equation involving capital U of s, the Laplace transform of u of t. This is our first step. Now this simpler equation could be an algebraic equation, it could be an ODE, it could be a less complex PDE as we just discussed. But the idea behind this equation is that it's easier to solve than what we had originally.
Now in the second step we're going to solve this simpler equation to end up with an expression for capital U of S. And then finally in step three we'll take the inverse transform of capital U of S. And what happens when we take the inverse transform of capital U of S? Well, we'll end up with an explicit equation for U of T. So that's the procedure. Now I'm going to spend the rest of this video using the Laplace transform to solve a simple PDE problem. In this lesson I won't go into too much depth with the properties of the Laplace transform. I won't talk about the sufficient conditions and I'm not going to compute the Laplace transform for simple expressions. I'm just going to straight up apply it to solving PDEs. All that other stuff isn't necessary for this lesson so I'll leave it for another video when I do a more rigorous introduction of Laplace transforms for ODEs. Anyway, let's start with a PDE problem. Suppose we have a semi-infinite rod that's completely insulated over its curved surface. So this means that heat conduction can only occur in the x direction. Heat can't travel in the y or z directions because those directions are insulated. Now the heat conduction along the x direction can be described by the one dimensional heat equation. So du dt equals the second partial of u with respect to x. Now since this rod is semi-infinite, x goes from zero to infinity and time just by its nature also goes from zero to infinity. On the left end of the rod the temperature is kept constant at u0, that's our boundary condition. And meanwhile the initial temperature distribution of the rod is zero. So the rod starts at zero temperature and then we make the left end of the rod equal to u0 and then we see what the temperature distribution of the rod looks like over time. Now we're going to solve this PDE using the Laplace transform. And there's two ways we can do it. One, we could take the Laplace transform with respect to x, or two, we could take the Laplace transform with respect to t. Both x and t vary from zero to infinity, and since the Laplace transform is an integral from zero to infinity, both x and t are viable options. However, because we're taking the second derivative with respect to x, we're going to need two boundary conditions at x equals zero in order for us to use the Laplace transform. Because let's remind ourselves that the Laplace transform of the second derivative involves both the value of the function at zero and the derivative of the function at zero. However, for x, we don't have both of those values. We only have the function at x equals zero. So it's better to just go with the Laplace transform with respect to t because the t is only in the first derivative in our partial differential equation. Now keep in mind that when we take the Laplace transform, we take the Laplace transform of the PDE and all the boundary and initial conditions that don't involve our t. In this case that means we'll take the Laplace transform of the PDE, so du dt equals second partial u with respect to x, and we'll take the Laplace transform of the boundary condition at x equals zero. If we take the Laplace transform of the PDE, then just going back to our table, we know that the Laplace transform of the first time derivative is s times capital U minus u evaluated at t equals zero. And again, capital U is the Laplace transform of u with respect to t. This expression on the left is then equal to the Laplace transform of the second partial of u with respect to x. But since it's just a partial derivative with respect to x, and since we're taking the Laplace transform with respect to t, it's safe to take the derivative out of the Laplace transform, in which case we'll be left with the second derivative of capital U with respect to x. Now our initial condition is just zero, which means that our ODE for capital U is d2u dx squared equals s times u. And now when we take the Laplace transform of the only boundary condition, we'll find that capital U at x equals zero comma s is just u naught over s. Again, when we go back to our table, we see that the Laplace transform of a constant is just that constant divided by s. Now let's solve this differential equation, and that's pretty simple. Since the derivatives are in terms of x, the variable s can be treated as a constant. So the solution to the second order ODE just involves exponentials. It's c1 times the exponential of square root of s times x, plus c2 times the exponential of negative square root of s times x. Now let's apply our boundary conditions. When x equals zero, capital U is u naught over s. So u naught over s equals c1 plus c2, since the exponential of zero is just one. 
In addition, the function capital U also has to be bounded. So as x approaches infinity, neither u nor its Laplace transform capital U can approach infinity because obviously we can't have an infinite temperature, that's just not physical. So therefore, c1 has to be zero so that this unphysical behavior does not occur. So that obviously means that c2 is u0 over s. So therefore, the solution capital U to our ODE problem is given by u0 over s times the exponential of negative square root of s times x. The only thing left to do is to take the inverse transform of capital U to get our actual solution u of x comma t. And fortunately, this expression isn't that complicated and we can find the inverse transform using a good enough table. And when we do that, we'll find that our solution u of x comma t is u naught times the complementary error function of x over 2 times the square root of t. The complementary error function is just a special function that's defined according to this integral definition, where p is a dummy variable of integration. And now if we plot the solution, here is what the temperature of the rod will look like at a particular time point. And as time increases, you'll notice that this temperature profile for positive values of x will continue to shift upwards, mainly because what's happening physically here is that as heat travels from x equals zero to the rest of the rod, the rest of the rod starts warming up, which is why you see this temperature profile shifting upwards with time. Hopefully that makes things clear. Now the nice thing about solving differential equations with Laplace transforms is that once you take the inverse transform, you're done. There's no need to apply any initial or boundary conditions because we've already done that before. Anyway, that should do it for the lecture. I'll finish off by thanking the following patrons for donating at the $5 level or higher to my Patreon. I put a link to my Patreon account in the description for people who are interested. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.